Welcome back to Retro Rebound. In today's video, we are going back to one of the greatest of all time superhero video games, and you can quote me on this, one of the most transformative games in its genre ever. Spider-Man 2 dropped and changed the whole game as far as I'm concerned. Why is that? I'll get into it. But first, a little bit of history. Imagine being young Maddie and loving Spider-Man 64, right? You know, the fogged up streets. You can only web swing in certain areas. Then Raimi's Spider-Man 1 comes around and they have the tie-in video game. And there you get pretty much a, at that time, next gen version of Spider-Man 64. But then all of a sudden, they burst open the floodgates and here comes Spider-Man 2 in a true open world. It was mesmerizing. The amount of times I have played Spider-Man 2 is disgusting. And I'm so happy to go back with all of you and celebrate this absolutely wonderful game following the incredible success of our Spider-Man 3 video. By the way, uh, most popular video on the channel now. Thank you for that, seriously. Really do appreciate y'all having my back. These games mean so much to me and just to kind of pop out these random videos on things that I grew up with and seeing you all click with it and be really positive and supportive. I don't think I say it enough here, but it means the world to me. Thank you. With that, if you're new here, you're into nostalgic and retrospective content, consider subscribing. Let's start with this complete in box experience because there is so much to be said about Spider-Man 2 on PS2, but also PSP and also PC. So let's get started, shall we? All right, back of the box. Take New York for a spin, indeed I shall. Do anything Spider-Man can with breathtaking new moves. Battle Doc Ock, bust street crimes, or clash with classic villains. Go anywhere, interact with anyone and anything. Now, anything might be a little stretch, but you could actually go inside buildings. Like for example, you could go inside the Daily Bugle and run around and interact with people in there. You could go inside certain bars and find hideouts. There were like little tokens that you could collect. There were stores you could go into to upgrade your combo. So they did allow exploration. And like when you saw that little red mark on the map or the green mark on the map, you went, yo, wait, that's... That's explorable, hold up, I'm coming for you. And you go inside and you find that collectible as a kid, awesome moment. Nowadays, we look for more depth. Back then, this was crazy. It also says web swing for the first time from street to rooftop across the entire city and features the voices of Tobey Maguire, Kirsten Dunst, and Alfred Molina to the happiness or dismay, depending on who you're asking of many gamers, because for some of these performances, I think it's hilarious, uh, they're quite phoned in, but the back also says, from random crime to global threat, the entire city is relying on you to save it. So this is all about being an open world game. How much so? Well, when you crack open the complete box copy first, you see the silhouette of Doc Ock here, but you also get that beautiful art, one of my favorite pieces of art ever with Doc Ock in the reflection of the eye of Spider-Man. But the reason I say that the open world is such a focus here is page two, go wherever a spider can says this time around you get to go everywhere, climb to the top of skyscrapers or dive to the busy streets. Swing around Times Square or run inside the buildings of Manhattan, you and Spider-Man have free reign over the city. And like I just said, I mean, they, they really do let you. Are they beautiful and rich with detail? I mean, no, but for like 2004, this was an amazing starting point. And the fact that it was just a tie-in game, I had so much respect for Treyarch and Activision for going all the way with this. You know, when you look at Spider-Man 1 in comparison, this game is also amazing, but you could kind of say, hey, they phoned it in, they just made a tie-in game. You didn't have to, in the sequel, say, well, let's make a huge open world game, one that was so impactful and transformative that many games, including every single Spider-Man game, even until Insomniacs, uh, would try to copy what was done in this game. Like you cannot get away from Spider-Man 2 in future Spider-Man games outside of, I'm gonna say Shattered Dimensions is the one that really just took the formula and just shook it up and said like, yeah, we're doing something way different here. Otherwise though, Spider-Man 2 is just felt in pretty much every open-ish Spider-Man game. Now, continuing on in this manual, unfortunately, no colorization, the only L this game will take, but continuing on with doing whatever a spider can, lots of different moves you could do here from web swinging to sprinting to grappling. They completely expanded the combat. So when you look at the first Raimi Spider-Man game, it's a simple combo system and I didn't mind it at all, but this game just, 
blows the floodgates right open, and you can do some crazy stuff. The aerial combos in this game are so sick. Web swinging, they have two different modes here, easy and normal. Normal gives you more precision, and my God, does it still feel good to swing around New York City in this game? I was surprised by that. You know, we went back to Spider-Man 3, and I said something about it felt really tight and rigid, but with Spider-Man 2, at first I was feeling the same thing, but as you start to get the swing boost upgrades, you really get rocking and rolling, and there is a level of precision in that game, plus all of the amazing air tricks that feel so good to let you explore the city. Again, so much of that energy was captured in Insomniac Spider-Man game. I, like, I, I love that game dearly, but thank you, Spider-Man 2, for existing. Uh, they go through some web attacks here, combat system. See, they talk about a dodge button, purchasing new combos. We'll get into that in a little bit. Air juggling. And here are some of the inputs you can do. Web trip, knockdowns, web hammers. Of course, the iconic web hammer. Link to web rodeo, and you can start whipping people around. Uh, there's so many cool moves here. My favorite move in this game, it's a later game move, but I think it was called like the stair step attack or something like that. And you knock an enemy up in the air, and you literally one, two, three, four, on their chest in midair. And I always thought it was so cool. In fact, me being the geek I was, I like to find these moves in games and then I'd imitate them by myself. And um, there's your mental image of the day. But I I loved trying to do this move, but I could never do it. I was like, how do they? How do you double jump? I, you can't, Matt. Gravity. Uh, anyway, <laughs> tons of moves. Look how many combos there are. So they really did take time to expand the actual combat. They go through simple stuff like the meters. I just like in this manual what they have up front, right? They're like up front about the expanded combat, the open world, instead of the little things that we always do when we crack open the manual. Like, here's how you start your game. Here's how you save your game. They're like, you know how to do that. Here's the cool stuff. Swing boosts, citizens in distress missions plenty of random crimes to, again, the destruction of certain Spider-Man games that refuse to evolve beyond it. We'll talk about that as well. But, oh man, so much content here, some gameplay tips, and then they go into the credits. And behind there is the Distillers, which is a, a pretty good band. And actually, they did the theme for Spider-Man. Uh, when you beat the game, they had this rad track that plays. And it's actually really good. Like, I recommend that you check it out. I, I thought it was so awesome as a kid, this kind of hard rock version of the Spider-Man theme. And then on the back here is promotion for X-Men Legends, a game that I know a lot of you want me to check out uh, because so many times we've talked about Marvel Ultimate Alliance and the ones that came before it, X-Men Legends, have yet to be covered. But I'm trying to like hold back on X-Men because there's so many X-Men games to talk about. I've played every single one of them and I love pretty much all of them. So I want to wait till it's like the right time where we got some type of X-Men stuff going on, but we'll get to it. You have my word. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is the complete box experience for Spider-Man 2 on the PS2. If you're going to buy this game, I would say look into the Xbox version. It's not back compat but it does run the best in the terms of load time. Otherwise, like, you don't, have to, you don't have to be picky here. Like, there's not one definitive version, but there are different versions. So what I want to do real quick is actually bounce to the PSP version before we get more into the PS2 version because I want to spotlight that as well. You see, Spider-Man 2 on PSP is more in line with what you saw in Raimi's Spider-Man 1 on PS2, Xbox, and GameCube. And I loved that game, man. Like, I love the music from it, the sound effects. Looks like the freak wants to play. Spider-Man, go grab Vinny. We'll take care of this, Jake. I wonder what that voice actor is up to nowadays. Yeah, you ever think about that kind of stuff? You're playing a game, you're like, what are they doing now? Uh, so that game just means the world to me. I, I remember having a Spider-Man themed birthday party in second grade and everyone got me Spider-Man themed presents when I, when I had friends, ha 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 ha. But now, ladies and gentlemen, you've got Spider-Man 2 on the PSP, and some will call this the lackluster version, but this game is awesome, especially like the Mysterio level. You're running around uh, like a, a castle of sorts, fighting all sorts of monsters, but it was also amazing to see in like a different Spider-Man game, those same crummy PNGs of like the citizen going like, oh, oh like that, as, and you have like five of them to save. I just personally love that all this stuff was brought back. You could call it lazy, like they kind of just reused assets, but for me, there's so much nostalgia packed into the very sound bites that I was all about it. Like even down to the death sounds in the game, like the, ugh. I just, they pulled it all from Spider-Man 1. 
I thought it was awesome it was here. But they also expanded the Spider-Man 1 combat system, and you could really flow into some nice stuff. The game felt surprisingly good to control. Like, I was thinking it was going to be kind of mid, but I was very, very, very pleasantly surprised. So much so that, unfortunately, I don't have it for the video, but I, I put my order in. I was like, I want this physically. This game is amazing. I need to immortalize this in my collection. But if you have not tried this out, I know the talk of most of this video will be Spider-Man 2 on PS2. Don't get me wrong, that's a fantastic game, and I'll explain why. But don't sleep on the PSP version. It is legitimately great, and if you really like that first Raimi Spider-Man game, you owe it to yourself to check it out. After every level, it even plays the same da 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 like that they did in the first game, and then you get to spend your money on upgrades, albeit this upgrade tree is much smaller than what you'd get in Spider-Man 2 on consoles, but I think it's serviceable. It's just a really short game. It kind of gave me that TMNT 2007 energy. I don't know how many of y'all are like, me and pick that game up on launch day and then we're sorely disappointed when you beat it <clears throat> like a couple hours later that was one of the most painful experiences of my childhood but i digress that's spider-man 2 on psp don't sleep on it what you can sleep on is spider-man 2 on pc uh, just let's let's pour one out for uh my my brothers and sisters who had to unfortunately i don't know why i did that they unfortunately had to play this game on PC. Now, it's so funny how things change, right? Things tend to come full circle, don't they? And, um, wow. This is the PC master race, huh? It's funny how things change because back then, PC got the most phoned-in version of the game that had very simplistic combat, no exploration, no open world, none of the cool Raimi Spider-Man 1 assets, none of that good stuff. Unfortunately, it was just kind of like a the weakest one of the bunch as far as I'm concerned. Now, I was reading the comments and I don't want to completely tarnish your childhoods because I did see a lot of people really dug this game. So, you know, all respect to you, right? Like there are plenty of games that I played growing up that I was like, yeah, this probably wouldn't be your cup of tea, but I dig it. But what I'm urging you to do is if you grew up with that game, come to our side of the fence. Come, come enjoy some Spider-Man 2 on PSP and PS2. I swear your mind will be blown. So speaking of which, Let's get into that. Why is Spider-Man 2 on PS2 what I believe is one of the most transformative video games really ever, but I think especially in the superhero genre? Well, the open world was something that we were just starting to see around that point in time. We were starting to figure out what we could and couldn't do. Now, as kids, you know, you just play games that are entertained. And as Spider-Man 2 continued to feed you endless objectives, Today, that would be called boring filler content, but back then, it's just impressive that it's all there. So when you play something like Amazing Spider-Man 1, Amazing Spider-Man 2, you know those missions where you hop on the back of a police car and you punch the top of the car and somehow that stops the car from moving. Uh, the ones where you help someone out on a rooftop, you beat up a gang robbing a store. All this was born in Spider-Man 2, and if you ever wondered why, as we've gone through all these Spider-Man games, why I've kind of like avoided Amazing Spider-Man 2 like the plague, uh, that game shamelessly just stole everything from Spider-Man 2 and then ruined it with this weird morality system that has the cops harassing you as you go from objective to objective. It's just not a fun video game. And so Spider-Man 2 was the biggest blessing and curse to the series because it was a blessing in the sense that I think it changed gaming. You saw so many open world superhero games come after, mainly from Activision. Like they would use some of that technology to power, say the Hulk video games, and then the Hulk video games would power prototype and so on and so forth. But you couldn't really ever mimic that success of Spider-Man. It wasn't until Arkham Asylum came around that that was the next major touchstone for superhero games. It was then and there that people went, okay, everything's gotta be free flow. And that's where Spider-Man lost its identity as they tried to meld in those amazing Spider-Man games, things that you saw in Spider-Man 2 and things you saw in Arkham Asylum and, and try to bring them together and it just felt messy. But in Spider-Man 2, if you look at it in that time capsule, as you're going around all these random objectives, you're collecting hero points, it's simple, but it's blissful. I love just completing missions, getting hero points, going to the store, getting cool combos. And honestly, going back to this game for like the millionth time, I gotta say now in 2023, is it gonna be that same feeling free flow combat that you get in Insomniac Spider-Man? Of course not but it does still feel pretty good, mainly because of the aerial combat. I was very surprised 
how you can knock someone up and do a handful of really cool moves. And especially as that upgrade tree expands, there was a great feeling of, I hate to sound corny and I hate to sound unoriginal here, but being Spider-Man, whether it be webbing someone up to a light post or that tricks you do in the air. I mean, that type of stuff was so ahead of its time, so stylish, so honestly unnecessary, but it just let you do everything and anything. And it was so fun. And to me, it was the moment that planted the seed of why Spider-Man games are great when you get to play as both Peter Parker and Spider-Man. Even though in this game, it was just going around the Daily Bugle and doing photo missions, I liked that there was a time I could be Tobey Maguire. I could be Peter Parker and take off the costume. Here, I, I will not take off the costume, but in the game, take off the costume. And I like that you could just do that and connect with the characters a little bit more. Because yes, it's not a one-for-one -one copy of the movie's plot. There are random villains that show up throughout the game. For example, I talked about Mysterio in the PSP version. I always remember the Mysterio section with the weird like game you had to join in and play in uh, this game. And it was... It was tough as a kid because this game does have one of those age old Spider-Man problems, which is the camera. You you really got to fight with that camera in this game, uh, especially when you're up on the ceiling. That was a problem for the whole Spider-Man franchise forever, really. And this game certainly has it. And when certain sections depend on wall crawling, yeah, you start to miss those modern bells and whistles, especially like running up build the side of buildings. That always felt so good in modern Spider-Man games, but in this one, what you have is just wall crawling at a sprint speed, so you better hope that you're using your swing boost wisely. But the swinging is just so good. You know when it's not good, though? When you're on a pizza mission. I've never heard such a bad track become iconic, but I love this weird Italian track, man. When you're delivering pizza in this game, this sense of anxiety builds up in you. I'm like, this isn't supposed to be as intense as it is. Stop. Oh my God. But he just really just ramps it up quicker and quicker and quicker as you're delivering more and more pizza. But I, I just remember as a kid loving and hating these parts. Like I love the intensity of it. I like the track. I thought it was hilarious, but I couldn't stand when I couldn't do my air tricks. Cause in this game, if you do air tricks, you juggle around the pizza too much. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll actually end up ruining it. And then you'll obviously not get as much from your job. You'll fail the mission. You don't want to do any of that. But but it was pretty much testing my muscle memory to see if like, are you not going to do a million and one flips here? Are you going to make sure you're not going to do like four backflips and, and while you have this pizza on your back? It was very hard for me to resist. But that was one of the defining missions in the game. It's funny because when I was talking about Ultimate Spider-Man when this channel first started, a game that I'd love to go back to again on this channel just because I, I love that game so much. But a lot of people talked about how there was kind of padding in the game. You had to become a certain level or do a certain amount of things to progress the game. Spider-Man 2 did that, and I feel like nostalgia may be blinding us a little bit, but every single chapter in Spider-Man 2 was like, collect X hero points, do X missions, buy this upgrade, and then you're good to go. I personally liked it because the progression in the game was good and it was something that made you dive into the side activities which were crazy at the time so you're like yeah happily we'll do so sure the story can wait and I, I felt it was good because it didn't make the story the the highlight the story isn't gonna be the highlight we already have the movie for that like let's have them just play the game but I just again found it so funny that Ultimate Spider-Man was considered padding but Spider-Man 2 like bottlenecks you every single chapter. And by the time you get to the late game, yeah, you gotta really rank up some of those points and, and just keep powering up Spider-Man. But it's fun because you start to get some cool stuff. Now, one thing I did miss was like a mobile dodge button in this game. That's one thing Spider-Man 3 did really well. In Spider-Man 2, it feels good because you gotta stand still and just bounce out of the way of every single attack coming your way. But when you got like five enemies attacking you at once, or as you get later in the game, you have machines, mechs, crazy things coming after you, it can get really difficult. I remember as a kid, this game was tough, but I just kept coming back to it and back to it and back to it. And that's the thing is, I wish, I'm sure you're all with me, I wish I could load up my childhood save file of Spider-Man 2 and just do an hour check. Like how many hours did I put into this game. Same thing 
with KOTOR, right? Like Knights of the Old Republic, favorite game of all time. There are so many games I would love to go back and check the hour count on lifetime. Like if I could just hack into my brain and I could ask myself one thing that I forgot, what is your hour count in Spider-Man 2, bro? Would be my question to myself. And I would need to find out because I believe this gotta be one of the most played games for me of all time. I adore it from top to bottom. Shout out to Sam Raimi. Shout out to Tobey Maguire, Kirsten Dunst, Alfred Molina. Just, oh my God, what a timeless game. And honestly, it couldn't be tied to a better movie. Like I know we typically talk about games here, but the Spider-Man 2 movie, I remember when I rewatched it with my mom a really long time ago, we sat down and we were just like, that was kind of depressing, but it's got so many iconic scenes, like this train scene where you see the suit like ripping in real time. That was such a powerful moment. Uh, so I, you know, just capturing all that majestic nature of Spider-Man in a video game. You know, he means so much to me. We're talking about a New York based superhero, New York based guy. Uh, you know, he's awesome. He's tall. He's nimble. Like part of me just sees qualities of myself in him. I was like, man, I want to be like Spider-Man. So I just dig the heck out of this game, man. It's so cool. It's so fun. And I, I really do hope some of you out there who haven't played it, try it out because it's a, it's a special video game. And it's one of those things that I kind of understand where Final Fantasy X fans come from. That may be just totally out of left field, but allow me just to explore that idea for a moment. When I made my Final Fantasy X video and went, I'm not really crazy about this game. Like I see why people are crazy about it because at the time it was that game that brought in so many modern mechanics that we see in so many JRPGs. So it was transformative, but if you're someone like me who got to it really late, it's one of those, ah, yeah, I've seen all of this before, so I'm less impressed by the gameplay. Probably if you've played any superhero open world game, you're going to have the same factor here. So so there is that meeting in the minds moment for me here that's important because a lot of people don't like me for my Final Fantasy X opinion, which I wasn't even like it's bad, but uh, it, you might have a similar experience of when you test it for the first time going, ah, yeah, you know, I, uh, I've kind of seen this before. What's, what's the big deal? But if you put yourself in 2004 and think about it that way and the hardware it was on, you may be a little more impressed. Don't sleep on that PSP version. Anyway, that's everything I got for you in today's video. I was just really, really stoked to talk about Spider-Man 2. I think this game is so special. I love it dearly. I played it so much. And while we've talked about it on the channel uh, around the time No Way Home came out, to make a dedicated video to it, just like we did with three, and I imagine one now at this point, such a cool feeling. I, I, it's like a full circle moment for me, right? You spend so many hours of your life playing this game you love it dearly. You think of all those moments when you were playing it. And then here you are all these years later recording a video on it, just sharing it with the world. Such a cool moment. So thank you for watching if you got this deep. And let me know your thoughts on Spider-Man 2 down below. With that, take excellent care of yourselves and I will see you in the next Retro Rebound. Peace.